Okay, we're at a Sheikli Hoyak uh, near El Hara, where we were yesterday. And this is a site that dates back to about 8,000 BC, down to about 6,000 BC. Uh, it was a urban complex. Uh, if you like, one of the first towns or even cities, uh, cities obviously being the place of civilization. Uh, the people here would have come originally from southeast Turkey, the area of Gebekli Tepe, uh, and the other sites that belong to the pre pottery Neolithic world. By this time, they are still pre pottery Neolithic, but very soon they will invent uh, ceramics, pottery, uh, and that will be used. But the people that were here um, were, were most skilled in their use of obsidian. Uh, and the so called uh, obsidian bracelet, which dates about 8000 BC, which was discovered during excavations at this site, show how sophisticated this culture was. The actual bangle itself looks as if it was done on a machine, um, on a lathe maybe. Uh, it could have been done yesterday. I mean, it's just so beautiful, so extraordinary. And the fact that it's also made from obsidian makes it remarkable. And the people would have lived in structures like this. Uh, these subsurface um, houses uh, and also these surface houses which would have had very small alleyways in between them uh, and you know th this is this is like something that you would get in medieval times I mean th this is the way that they lived 8000 BC and the archaeologists are still working here but it is empty, so presumably they're coming back soon. But obviously we'll have a look around the site, see what's here, uh, and um, you know, just take it where, where it goes. Something like this could have been almost like one of the oldest cult buildings. Right. That's how they would have done it. Uh, I mean, whether there were uh, roofs on places like Quebec Tepe is something that's been debated. Right. But it is possible that some structures like Quebec Tepe would have had roofs like sure. this. Yeah. In Palestine at this time, you've got um, Jericho, which also yeah. dates about 8,000, 8,500 BC, and that was a huge fortress a huge wall with a massive wall. Time, On the outside of that, you've got a really deep um, right. cut ditch that's, you know, that's in the bedrock itself. Right. You've got a huge stone tower. Yeah, I mean, yeah, quite so clearly there was predators out there. Now, whether yeah. they were, well, almost certainly they were human. Yeah, they were so something around. like this, you'd have been very much conscious of protection. From, from the base, the, the, the lowest ones are that deep and it goes to the top, which is about 15 metres here. Right. Okay. So, you know, it's exactly the same, but the only big difference with Gebekli Tepe, they're using bigger blocks to create that layer cake. Yeah. They're using the rock chippings from all of the stones that they're, that they're um, you know, all of the stones which that they're, they're making. Yeah. Obviously, we can see from these pillars that the, the direction, directionality of this is towards the north, uh, which I find, you know, intriguing and, and, and totally the same pattern as we find at Gebekli Tepe, Navali Chori, um, and also at um, another place called Kayanu, which is to the north of Diapakar, the big city, uh, all of which have this exact same orientation. You know, and some of my colleagues say, oh, well, yeah, therefore it must have been pointing towards the south through the door, but I don't think that's the case. It's like with a church. When you walk into a church, you know, you walk in one end and you walk along the central aisle towards the altar. All of the statues are pointing towards you. You come towards the high altar, there's an image of, of Jesus, a cross and whatever. There's the, the stained glass windows. They're not looking past you towards the, the, the west. You, they're there for you so that you can um, get an emotional connection with that and the direction of east, which is what a church is. And it was the same thing at Gebekli Tepe, in my opinion, and at these other places. You're coming in and you're, re you're respecting, you're revering something towards, in this case, the north. Because obviously the direction of the south, as you quite rightly said, is towards the sun. Yeah. 
at midday. So that would have kept the, the warmth in. Uh, the south was the direction of life, don't get me wrong. It's the direction of life, where life comes from, as east is as well. But west is the direction of death. The north is the direction of, of death and rebirth. And one of the reasons why the north became associated with this was not just because the stars revolving around the northern celestial pole, often, as we know, marked by a pole star, but also because that is the place of darkness. It's a place where no light gets to because the sun never reaches there. It's like the north side of any hill never gets any light. So that became the direction of death and by virtue of that rebirth as well into the next world, into the afterlife, into the sky world. And this would have been something that was generally universal across the Northern Hemisphere, even into parts of the Southern Hemisphere, as far south as Peru. They still revered the North as an entrance into the sky world. Obviously, instead of you know, the huge, great twin monoliths we see at Gobekli Tepe, yeah. what they obviously had done by this time, and I, I haven't got a date for this, but I mean, it's, let's say it's, this is 7,000 BC, just for the sake of it, they've simplified the central monoliths and obviously the use of um, other standing stones, you know, T-pillars, and now they've just got two in the direction that they want. This stone, they've obviously left there because they think it's a part of something. Um, it, this could be a part of, of one of these, two, these twin pillars. So they've simplified what they had at Gobekli Tepe by putting the two huge monoliths in the middle. And what they've gradually done is shunted them towards the north. This is what happened at Chayonu, uh, which is north of Diyarbakar, which dates from about 8,000 to about 6,000 BC. The progression it, with this is that the, the interest in the north re remained, but what they were doing is simplifying, essentially. I mean, in a way, it's, it's almost like the twin columns that you get in later temples, like Solomon's temple, for instance, this is the origin of that whole concept. Twin pillars representing a gateway, if you like, a stargate towards the sky world. And of course, within much later, uh, you know, Semitic tradition, you find these becoming the pillars of Enoch, the pillars of, of, of Solomon, Joachim and Boaz and they develop originally from the twin monoliths that were in places like Gobekli Tepe and by the time you get to this site which could date anything between 6000 and 8000 BC they've simplified it by just having two pillars which they've directed and placed in the north which was the direction of death and rebirth and afterlife the south is where they would have entered, no doubt. Uh, it would seem as if they did their ritual activity on the southern side. There was a fire hearth um, towards the east. Um, and there was one small piece of stone that they've left here, which clearly they see as significant for whatever reason. And another one in that corner there. But the main columns themselves have been robbed out. So in many ways, this is the transition from pillars or monoliths to columns. It takes places at sites like this, Ashikli Hoyak, in central Turkey. 